Good afternoon, YouTube. Uh, welcome back to Fat Cat Collections. Today, I want to share with you guys another great product that I picked up the other day. Uh, I'm ecstatic about this. It's something that I've been wanting for a long time. It's not a watch. It is another air rifle. Uh, now, <laughs> not to reference Christmas Story too much here in this video, but I've been a fan of shooting guns uh, since I was a little kid. I remember my very first air rifle when I became fascinated with firearms and air guns and stuff like that. And basically, anything that shoots a projectile or, or an arrow or shoots something it, it could be anything right blow gun slingshot i've always had a lot of fun just kind of plinking and target shooting um, now just so you guys know i'm not a hunter i don't believe in killing anything i know that that's a little bit hypocritical because i eat meat uh, i love seafood i love a good steak but i know it is hypocritical and i'll be real with you guys you know i cannot stand hypocrites but uh, i guess we all have a little bit of hypo hypocrisy sometimes so i want to be clear with you guys uh you know i i'm not saying i wouldn't hunt if i had to uh the way i look at it now is my hunting's delegated by the super by the by the uh, i guess you know the uh, farms and, and places where the, where food or meat or protein is raised uh i would just rather have it out of sight out of mind i'm too sensitive and too nice uh and i'm not saying that if you hunt that you're a bad guy or anything like that please don't take it that way my brother-in-law wants to start hunting one of my best friends wants to maybe get involved in the hunting for me personally uh it's it's just not my thing uh now again if society broke down you had to hunt for your own food then you know maybe my feelings would be different about it um i've you know used to bow fish when i was younger and as much as i enjoyed that uh as an adult now i just don't see the point in just killing some helpless carp uh <laughs> it's just trying to suntan himself for the joy of just stalking them and then putting a hole through him so uh for me it's just not for me anymore i do crab i do fish uh but you know basically i'm a catch and release kind of guy uh unless of course it's crab or you know any kind of shellfish then of course i'm taking it home i guess i'll make an exception for that salmon stuff like that but when it comes to you know uh, like a deer i'm not saying i would never do it i never say never with things but it's just not my preference i'd rather just buy it in the grocery store so for me, a lot of the stuff that I have is really just for target shooting and self-defense. Uh, and again, those things you hope you never have to use any stuff like this for that, right? So, I mean, 90% of the time, 99% of the time, it's just a cool factor. I'm a man. I like guns. I enjoy shooting. Uh, me and my buddy will go up to logging roads and stuff like that. We'll go plinking. Now it's a little bit expensive when it comes to, you know, ammunition. Uh, so, you know, we're not blasting off the big bore stuff. But uh, this is a great way to be able to have a lot of fun on the cheap. And this is another air rifle. This is by Gamo. Uh, this is my second Gamo air rifle. I've been extremely happy with their first air rifle that I picked up. Um, just, I don't have a you know crazy arsenal of air rifles, but just to let you guys know, uh, my very first air gun little story for you here, because you guys know I love to talk, because you let me know. Um, you know, my first air gun, I remember seeing my dad's vintage antique, which we still have, uh, Daisy BB gun. And my buddy, uh, at the time where I grew up, I uh, had some, let me just put this down, just bear with me, okay? He had some land behind his house on the river, and, uh, you know, he was involved in the same things I worked, ar ar archery, and, and we wanted to start shooting. My dad was like, absolutely not, you know, they're dangerous, I don't want you to lose an eye, <laughs> right? No, and then not, again, I said I wasn't going to go too far in Christmas story references, but yeah, that's a, that's a very valid, uh, let's face it, kids are dumb. And let's face it, men, we're dumb. And as we become adults, we're we become dumber. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they're dangerous. It's like anything else. You have to use good judgment. Be careful. Always treat these guns like they're reloaded. But back then, BB guns were just BB guns. The, the, the worst that could happen, you could lose an eye. These modern-day guns can kill you. They're really, um, I don't know if they'll ever be regulated, but right now they're not. And so I really enjoy shooting, and I love the fact that you can shoot this stuff on the cheap. Downside to BB guns is that you get a lot of ricochets. So I think pellet guns, and I think most of you would agree with me, are way safer uh, for if you're going to, you know, introduce maybe firearms or something into your, uh, in, you know, with your kids or your family or anybody really. Um, they're great because when you shoot something, not saying you can't get ricochets, but it's it's unlikely it's going to come back and hit you. Again, legal disclaimer, always use eye protection. Always be careful, you know, of course. Take your training classes if you feel like you need that. I always think it's a good idea if you're new to firearms and you don't know anything about them. Absolutely. Uh, and always treat these things like they're loaded. Even though these are, this is an air rifle, uh, this can kill you, you know. So, um, I remember my first air gun was a Marksman Biathlon Trainer in the Sportsman Guy catalog. And I remember seeing it. It was my story for, you know, BB guns and firearms was exactly like the Christmas story. I want it, want it. My dad, no way, you're not taking that to your friend's house to go shooting. And, um... 
you know, he ended up getting me this beautiful biathlon trainer. And at the time, I never heard of a pellet gun. I think they were relatively, they were a little bit, for me, they were brand new. And I was a little kid. Uh, I remember seeing the picture of the pellet. And I was like, whoa, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen as a kid. So I got this awesome biathlon trainer chiseled up. If you ever, you can Google it and check it out. Um, I still have it, although I do have to try to repair it. It doesn't, uh, the piston doesn't lock back. Never get rid of it. And as time went on, I picked up a few more. I, I picked up a, um, late, or not, I picked up my wonderful mom and dad, um, and my dad in this, this, this part of it uh, got me. The next one was a, um, was a, it was a Crossman. Uh, I picked up this local sporting shop. They had them in stock. It was a Crossman uh, break barrel uh, piston air rifle. Same as the, the Marksman, but uh, a little bit, a little bit more feet per second. So the Mark, the Marksman was 450. This was kicking up to 600. Then I picked up basically a BB slash uh, hybrid pellet gun uh, just by Crossman AR-15 or M16 style. Uh, very cheap. Not as nice as the other ones. But as time went on, um, you know, and I got older, I kind of you know, got out of it a little bit. Still enjoyed picking them up, but didn't really want to get another one. But I always wanted to get something a lot more powerful. So many years ago, probably 15 years ago now, uh, I rebuilt this retaining wall at my folks' house that was fall that was uh, installed incorrectly. Don't worry, I'm going to get to the point here. And uh, my dad got me uh, a gammo. And so that was my first gammo. Uh, you know, air rifles now, they really range in price. You can spend a couple grand for air rifles. And it seems that now air rifles are starting to kind of creep up. Uh, I think a lot of people are starting to buy them because there's a frenzy going on in the United States. Other countries have always used air rifles. But I feel like in the United States, because ammo is getting harder to find, people want to shoot, still have a good time. Air rifles are a great way to do that. You can get a pack of pellets, like 250. Again, they're going up in price too, but I picked up, uh, Walmart had some locally. I picked up 250 for $3.50. I picked up a 500 count for about five bucks. And again, the price will range depending on what your purposes are. But for cheap stuff, plinking, uh, that's what I got. So uh, the Gammo is great. I mean, I love it. It's a 1,200 feet per second with Raptor pellets. And it's about, I think, 1,000 feet per second or 9-something with your standard pellets. I've always had 177 caliber pellets. I want something a little larger. So that's why I picked up this. This is a 22 caliber pellet. Uh, and there's quite a size difference. When you start looking at a 17 versus a 22, they're quite a bit larger. And they really have some great knockdown power so I haven't really had an opportunity to really you know put a couple hundred rounds to this but I shot it a few times in the backyard uh, I really enjoy it so let's talk a little bit about Gamo. Gamo is uh, these air rifles are made in Spain Gamo is a big time player I think Gamo is almost kind of replaced in my opinion when you thought air rifles back in the day what did you first think of Daisy right uh, Daisy was the air rifle to go with and there's always brands like Onschutz, there's always brands like RWS and those kinds of brands. Crossman, Remington, uh, Marlin, they will, a lot of companies have come out with brands. There's so many air, brands of air rifles. Uh, Euromax, I think it's called. But I'm telling you, a lot of the air rifles I see now, you're going to be paying over $300 for a lot of them. And, you know, my mind, when I start to look at air rifles and I see $300, to me, for my purposes, once I get to that $300 price point, it's like, well, I, you know, I almost want to just get a 22 of some sort, spend a little more and get a 22 that I've been wanting. So the price point on this was fantastic. These are hard to keep in stock on Amazon. I will put a link in the description for this gun. This is, can be had right now for 130 shipped. So that's incredible, even for a Gammo. I've had great luck with Gammo. I love their product. I love the fact they all use this synthetic kind of polymer style stock. If I believe it's polymer or plastic of some sort. Uh, it feels more like polymer, so it's super durable. Um, this is more of a basic stock. You have a slight raised Monte Carlo cheek piece. Uh, my other Gammo, my SOCOM Tactical, um, it's got a higher adjustable cheek piece. It's a little bit, I'd say a little bit more military, militaristic, if I'm using the right word for that. But uh, this is still pretty nice looking. You have a really nice thick butt plate. Although I don't think you're really, it's funny this butt pad is actually larger than my 12 gauge. Uh, these don't really kick. I mean, if you're a little tiny kid, you might feel it give you a little, a little bump in the arm, but these don't really kick. This is more for comfort, but really over the top butt plate, slightly, again, slightly raised Monte Carlo cheek piece. There is this little bit of a rubber kind of a decorative band right here. Um, that is removable, if that bothers you, it's like a neon green. It doesn't really bother me, but uh, some of you, if you want to go with you know that whole black tactical look, you might want to pull that off there, not a problem. Uh, you do have a integrated dovetail, uh, it's not Picatinny, but uh, on my other air rifle, my Gamo SOCOM, I actually changed this uh, from, from a dovetail to a Picatinny uh, adapter, and then I put on whatever scope I wanted that was Picatinny. In this case, this came with the scope. So $130, you get an air rifle scope 
with um, doesn't have red dot or anything like that, but it's just a standard air rifle scope. I forget the, I think they have the range on here for it somewhere, but uh, again, just click the link and read more about it. 22 caliber pellet. This will this will uh, project the pellet to. So what's interesting on on here, okay? And this <laughs> we've mentioned this a lot of times, and I didn't expect it from a company like Gammo. When you look at the Gammo listing. On the website here, it's going to tell you that uh, there's a, a rating. I think it's like 1,200 for the 177 caliber. If you want 177, you can get it 177. In this case, it's 22 caliber. It says here 975 feet per second with PBA platinum pellets. Uh, now, I know there are the Raptor pellets, and the Raptor pellets are a lot lighter, so you get more velocity. Basically, when you shoot, I don't like shooting Raptor pellets uh, for 177 because it breaks the sound barrier and you get this loud crack. They're a lot noisier if you're using those pellets that are 1,200 feet per second. I just use standard plinking pellets. Again, I'm not competing or anything like that. So this actually on the gun, though, says 1,000. For, with the 22 caliber pellet. So I'm not sure what the discrepancy is. Maybe they had a slight change. Maybe they upped the feet per second on newer models. Not sure, but this particular gun says 1,000 feet per second, which is a lot. Um, well, yeah, you get a nice kind of uh, textured foregrip and uh, a textured hand grip. So you almost have more of like a, a swoop to the hand grip. So it's more of like a, like a pistol grip. Uh, not quite as extreme as, say, like a 45 caliber or like a 45 style grip or like an AR-15 or an assault rifle. But you do have kind of a nice grip on this, which I liked. I always prefer the look of more of the, the military style stocks than your standard hunting stocks. Um, they all work, but... I love the way this looks. Uh, gun is extremely lightweight, which to my surprise, it was lighter uh, than my 177 Gamo SOCOM. Uh, you can see the barrels actually uh, sort of enlarged, or, or I think you'd call that fluted. Uh, it does have kind of some grooves going down the side. You have a couple small indentations, uh, which kind of, I guess, um, uh, sort of mimic what you'd get on like a flash hider. Uh, hopefully you can see that by the by the video here. Obviously you can see the muzzle there. You have a nice and large 22 caliber pellet. And this is actually an integrated suppressed model. And a lot of the Gamo, uh, this falls under their whisper category. A lot of these rifles have an integrated suppressor. Now there is no ATF regulation to the best of my knowledge. Uh, and I'm 99% certain on that. This is how it came, but it has been altered. There is no ATF regulation on air rifle. So to have a suppressed air life rifle, you don't need to pay a tax stamp. You don't, you're not violating any laws. Again, check with your local government, of course, uh, but at least in my state, uh, this is completely legal to own. Uh, and Amazon's pretty good. If it's not legal to own your state, they're not going to ship it to you. Uh, so the scope, the nice thing about the scope too is when you have, and this is a piston, uh, this is actually a nitro piston to the best of my knowledge. Most of my other air rifles are spring pistons. So what you do is when you cock this down, and I'm not going to cock it, but you break the barrel, you pull it all the way down, and it locks in place, and then you set it back. What you're doing is pushing back a large spring, setting a piston back, and when you pull the trigger, that piston is compressing the slug of air and moving the, the pellet out the air rifle, right? Out the through the chamber and out the barrel. Uh, so with this, this is what they call, and I believe it's the same as a nitro piston, but they call this the IGT. This is inert gas technology. You say it's, it's a gas piston that replaces the spring to deliver more terminal velocity, less vibration, more consistent power, and a constant smooth cocking effort. As we know, with springs generally when you cock them, springs get harder as you, as you compress them. With this, it feels pretty much the same throughout the entire um, cocking I guess um, distance. Uh, so what I like about this is, is because this is a whisper. Now my other air rifle, the Gamo Socom, was not an air rifle with a built-in suppressor. Uh, this here, I will tell you that it's still pretty noisy. Um, I think it's it's a little bit quieter than my 177 with the spring piston. What you don't get with this is because it's a nitro piston, and to the best of my knowledge, you're basically compressing uh, basically a nitro piston, and what happens is that piston's replacing the spring. So you're basically compressing a slug of maybe uh, air. I'm not sure what makes up the, the piston, if it's nitrogen or if it's, um, you know, like uh, some sort of fluid, but basically you're compressing this strut on the inside of here, in essence, and then that strut is letting loose 
on a piston, on a like a, a plunger basically, and compressing the slug of air. It works exactly the same way as a spring piston, but you're not actually cocking a spring back, you're compressing a piston. So the idea that you get less spring blowing, I would say with uh, standard air rifles that have a spring, you do get a little bit noisier experience. And a lot of what you hear is the spring going off, that loud bang of the spring. With this, they're slightly quieter. I think it's a much smoother, cleaner crack that you get uh, with a gun like this. Um, I really like it. You know, and, I've been, like I said, I've been wanting something that was a, a piston or a nitro piston or an inert gas technology piston for quite some time. So let me just read you what else it says on here. Uh, it says here, again, less vibration, smoother cocking effort. Again, those are kind of things on paper. Uh, this is kind of like I always like to reference the Rolex argument, the dicta, uh, if you guys are, are familiar with me. You know, it's those differences. Uh, they're very subtle, right? You're, you know, you may or may not notice. You know, you pull the crown out of a Rolex, you turn that crown. It's gonna be maybe, maybe it's super buttery smooth. You might turn it on Victor with an H35, and it might be a, maybe a little grainier. Uh, something that if somebody didn't point it out to you and you said, hey, can you really nitpick this? Uh, you know, you're not really going to notice a difference. So when you cock a regular piston like the one that I have downstairs, a spring piston, uh, you know, if they didn't list that on there, I wouldn't have noticed really any difference. Now that you list it and you can know what to kind of look for, it does feel more consistent. However, this even this is still easier right at the beginning. It does get harder. Now that could be because of the, uh, I guess, the rotation of my, my shoulder, maybe the angle of my shoulder. Uh, it's kind of hard to say, but ultimately, you know, a kid might have a problem cocking this, but a grown adult won't. Um, it says it has a, uh, uh, it says pinpoint accuracy has a clean, uh, has a clean, creep, and crisp feel. Uh, the scope is a 4x32 shockproof scope. I have found that that's important. I had, even on my older Crossman, a standard uh, rifle scope that was inexpensive. You know, and we're going back 20 years here. Um, it eventually, it did fail. I got a long time out of it. But uh, these things do produce kind of a different recoil than your standard firearm. Now, I'm not sure about the, the nitro piston compared or the inert gas technology piston or the gas piston. I'm not sure what the recoil, how the recoil is different between this and a standard spring piston. I'm sure you can Google it and find out. However, the nice thing about this is a lot of these mounts that are dovetail uh, do experience rifle scope creep where they, the, the scope will start to kind of move on the rail. Picatinny rails, you don't have that problem. Uh, with this, there is a set, uh, basically a set marker or like set pin on the underside of the ring that sets a scope into the barrel so it'll eliminate uh, any kind of scope creep. So that's great. This is designed for the gun. You're not going to have any kind of issues. Again, you know, scopes are pretty cheap. You know, there's a, a huge range of, of optics out there. Um, I've always used pretty inexpensive optics. I have a few more expensive ones, uh, but for the most part, uh, they all work, you know. Um, what else about this gun? Um, again, the integrated suppressor, it's very, very small. It's just on the end of the barrel. Um, from what I could tell, it's really tough to see you know, there's a couple holes, four holes that go around this first kind of ring of the barrel or the muzzle. Um, that's probably where some of that gas escapes. Uh, basically, the, I, from what I can tell when I read about this online, it seems like there's two or three baffles on the end of this. Um, you know, maybe on paper it might quiet it down a little bit, maybe remove a slight, slightly, little bit of that crack, but it's still pretty, pretty noisy. Um, it, you know, I would compare it to, it's definitely not like if you think about somebody working on a roof or construction, uh, you know, when you think about a nail gun, those are a lot quieter than this. This is definitely going to set off a noise, but um, I don't think it's going to really disturb any, any of your neighbors. You know, again, depending on where you live, where, where it's safe to shoot, uh, it's not something that's as loud as like a 22, of course. So really these things, there's plenty of tests on YouTube guys reviewing this stuff. Uh, ultimately, you can look at decibel readings all day long, but it really comes down to to you hearing it in person. So um, in my case, fenced in backyard, you get a lot of echo back there. So everything's amplified back there. Uh, I haven't tested this out yet. Next time we go shooting up the logging roads, I'm going to bring this and it'll be a good indication of how loud this is compared to my other gun. But again, not over the top, not something you can't shoot. You know, if you are around people, it's not something that's going to be like people are going, wow, you don't need air protection for it. Um, I will say, in a closed environment, if you shoot this inside your house or in an enclosed environment, um, I just ran a little pellet gun oil through it and I put it in kind of a up against a towel and I shot it just get that uh, that, that um, oil through the through the barrel. Um, it definitely made my ears ring 
<laughs> in an enclosed bathroom, but only for a couple seconds and it was over and done with. So uh, again, not super quiet. I think if you were looking for something super quiet, you, the most quiet air guns are going to be your pre-compressed piston or your pre-compressed air chamber that have like the big CO2 canister or ones that you compress with air. Um, those are going to be the most quiet because all you're letting loose is you don't have anything letting loose to make any noise. You're basically just having the air move. So uh, those are always going to be your your quietest. So they can do all they can with spring pistons or nitro pistons or you know or gas pistons. Uh, ultimately you're still gonna have more noise than really any of them but it's not bad and really when you start looking at what these things cost the price on this is incredible. 130 with the scope you really can't go wrong with this. You do get the scope caps as well if I forgot to mention that. It says here the item weight the gun is four ounces uh, I don't see this as four ounces. So again, I think maybe they mean the scope on that, uh, but this is definitely more than four ounces. So um, what else? Um, it just mentions the shock absorber pad. Again, whisper noise reduction. And uh, that's really about all the information I have on the site. Um, what I can tell you about Gamo products is that they're great, the value, they are, in my opinion, the Invicta of air guns. Uh, you know, you can get cheaper ones, you get inexpensive daisies, 50, 60 bucks, there's other brands that make stuff, but if you want something that really feels good, something that, that feels that's well made, uh, something you can take out with you and not really have to worry about breaking this, I, I feel like when I compare some like my really entry level, uh, you know, my marksman was under a hundred bucks when I got that. And that was like, I think like maybe 80 back in the day. Um, still a nice gun, but when you feel this, there's definitely an element of quality that goes with this gun. And again, I'm not saying the other guns are not good quality or anything like that. They're not shitters or anything like that. They're great guns. But if you take this out, if you are gonna use this for small game hunting, um, this is something that it, it can handle a task. You know, if you knock it over, you drop it. This is pretty durable. Uh, this stuff, you're not gonna crack. Um, you know, there's a different, this is not just regular plastic. This is extremely um, shock absorbent. So uh, just a fantastic air rifle. Only downside I'll say to almost every air rifle out there uh, that are break barrel like this, they have never put spring uh, sling mounts on them. And so uh, you could get a little creative. They make kind of slip on sling mounts. I never liked the way those look. They just look messy. Um, you could actually tap this if you got the right uh, sling mount. Maybe other companies make something. Uh, with this, you have to be a little careful because you have a brake barrel. You can't mount anything here. It's going to get in the way when you cock this. Uh, it would be kind of nice if they had something that was maybe um, an offset sling mount. I just don't know why no like none uh, that I that I own have sling mounts on. So uh, only downside to a lot of air rifles, unless you want to get in something like an AR-15 style or an assault rifle style, uh, then you have the rails, you can mount whatever you want. Uh, kind of like on my AR, I have mounted a rear gas tube sling mount, and of course, a uh, sling mount kind of more towards a foregrip where you use a two point or a uh, in my case I use two or one point sling and again I'm kind of new you know I, like I said when I go shooting it's mainly um, you know a lot of stuff personal protection uh, going out plinking you know when we're out shooting on the logging roads a lot of times we're putting the guns just in the back of the car again but I like to have the option uh, if I want to carry this let's say we're going out crabbing we're not really going out to shoot we're just going to go out there and just have something with us um, it'd be nice to have a sling but again not a deal breaker you can get some scabbards for this stuff and just throw it over your back if you have to as well so um, safety is right in the front of the trigger here one thing i really like about this gun compared to my uh, gamo socom tactical is the trigger on this is fantastic in my opinion uh it's not a really long trigger uh it's a nice distinct break and compared to the other air guns i have I have to tell you, this is the best trigger of all of them. And, uh, you know, like my Crossman's pretty long. The Marksman's not bad. Um, the Gamo, again, not bad at all. But this is just, they definitely improved the trigger on these. So, uh, guys, I most of the Gamo guns that I've seen over the years are like my Gamo Socom Tactical and, and 177. Uh, that gun was about 300 bucks. So, this is a fantastic value. Before I got my hands on this, uh, they had like 